everybody, I'm Ann. And I'm Tara, and we're nurses on the fourth floor here at Wesley Long. And in this video, we're going to discuss how to take care of your catheter. Okay. All right. Let's do it. You will be discharged from the hospital with a catheter in place for seven to ten days. You'll get all the supplies that you need to take care of your catheter in the hospital, mm -hmm. so you don't have to buy anything extra. We'll give you a goodie bag to go home in. Um, you'll have one big catheter bag, you'll have two leg bags, you'll have dry gauze tape, and a leg strap. Um, we want you to practice good hand hygiene at home. We want you to wash your hands good whenever you're emptying the catheters or changing the catheters. Your catheters will only be removed by urologists, no one else. We recommend this because say you end up in a hospital for some other reason, say a car accident, we don't want them taking out your catheter. So let's talk a little bit about this large bag. This is the bag that you will come back um, from the OR with. It needs to be emptied at least eight hours when you're at home. So you can see this is the one you'll wear most often and you will always use this at night because it holds more. Um, it's okay to get this bag wet. If you take a shower, you just let it get wet and then when you get out, just kind of towel dry it off. You want to make sure that this um, stays below the level of your hips because it is a gravity driven system. So when you're walking, you want to make sure it's down to your side. And then when you're lying in bed or whatever, or sitting, you want to make sure that you always have it below the level of your bladder as well. Um, the urine color is important to kind of keep a track of when you get home as well. It may be like a yellow color or a red. Um, if you notice clots in it, you may want to let your physician know. You may have some leakage around the catheter itself, and if urine spills out about that, that's actually a normal thing that can happen. Some men have told us that they put some gauze around it just to kind of capture the urine. Um, you also may have some sticking to you where the catheter comes out, and you can use Vaseline or Neosporin if you're not allergic to that to kind of lubricate the spot. Right. This is our little bag, or we call it our travel bag. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys put this on. Um, underneath the pants to go places while they have the catheter in. You should empty it when it's a half to two-thirds full. And we're going to show you how to switch the bags um, in a little bit and we'll, we'll discuss the importance of the green caps. It's okay to also get this bag wet. Just make sure, um, like in the shower, when you get out you just towel it dry. Um, a little bit about this bag, it does have an anti-reflux valve in the top of it. Um, so, say you have this on and you lay on the couch, it won't backflow into your bladder. It also does have an arrow on it, so you shouldn't get it on upside down. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. So when you come back from the OR, you will also have this strap, it's called a leg strap. Um, it may be on the right leg, it may on the, be on the left, it doesn't really matter. It um, holds the catheter in place by this little, you can see the little Y right here. We'll let Ann put it in there. It just encircles around it and then you strap it down. And the purpose of this, get her strap, is in case someone were to accidentally pull on the catheter, it tugs on the strap as opposed to pulling on the catheter itself. So it's kind of like a safety feature. You want to make sure that the strap is always kind of on the inside of your leg and that there is a, um, some slack in it so that you have room to move at all times. We're going to show you how the catheter stays up inside of you. Pretend this is your bladder. We're going to feed the catheter up in there. And then the Y port, we're going to blow up with saline. And it blows up a balloon that sits on the end. Then it wedges down in the neck of the bladder. So that's what holds your catheter in there. So when you stand up, your catheter is not going to fall out. And when you go back to the urology office, they will deflate the balloon the same way without using that port. The saline out when they take the catheter out. And that's how it slides right back out. All right, just some other information about the um, catheter, the big bag. Um, it does have a handle on it, so you can hang, hang it on a chair rail, a bed rail. Catheter tubing always needs to be on top of the leg. Um, you don't want to place it underneath the leg because um, you might cut off the flow of urine. Um, also, if your um, catheter's not draining, you always want to check to make sure it's not kinked. It can get kinked like that. If you have pets that like to chew, you need to put mm -hmm. them out of the bedroom at night maybe. Or we had one patient tell us they just covered it up with a, a pillowcase and it was out of sight, out of mind, so the pet left it alone. 
Um, some other things about the catheter itself, of course this is the Y port so you don't have to worry about that at home. The blue port, um, this is where we draw specimens off in the hospital so you don't have to worry about that also. Now I'm going to show you how to empty your catheter bag. First of all, you're just going to squeeze the green handle. This does not let the urine out. The clamp is what keeps the urine in there. And then over your toilet or a urinal, you're going to put your thumb on the end of the clamp. And of course, you always remember Ann's holding it up just because we're at demonstration purposes, but you'd always have that bag below the level of the bladder. Right. Um, so now we're going to show you how to convert the large bag to the smaller bag. Um, you can use the leg strap for this, but you really don't need this white leg strap when you are converting over to the other bag. So we're going to remove it right now by taking the green straps up and just removing the catheter. Not the catheter, but removing the catheter strap. <laughs> and this um, catheter strap you can actually wash if you need to. You can just throw it into the wash um, and let it air dry. Okay, so when you are getting ready to switch over from this appliance to this appliance, you need to remember that you have to kind of occlude the urine in this tube. So to do that, um, if not, the urine's just gonna come out when you unhook it. So we use a garden hose type net method to kind of mm -hmm. cut the flow off. Some people's hands are strong enough they can kind of cut it off like this. But I am going to kind of take this and work the catheter up. And once the catheter gets to a point, oh, we were strong on that one. Mm -hmm. Whoop. Okay. And then the green cap that she talks about, we're going to apply that to the larger bag. And then we can set our larger bag off into the bathroom and not have to worry about that. Then we're going to take the other appliance, which is a smaller bag, and just hook it to right where you took the other one out. So see, so you have just basically switched one appliance to the other appliance. Now, some things I want to tell you about this leg bag. You notice she's got the rubber tubing going behind the spout. The reason for that, actually a patient told us this, if you have this rubber going over the spout, it kind of presses into your leg and can cause some indentation in your leg. So then we're going to go ahead and put the leg bag on the leg. It's got little buttons on it that you just snap close. You want to make sure that this is on the inside of your leg. And again, you want to leave some slack so if you move around that it won't tug on you at all. The bottom strap you can um, choose to use or you don't have to use. It's completely up to you. Uh, it's just kind of extra security kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now to empty this one, it's really simple, but you just want to unhook the bottom, which you may have to help me do. Thank I you. I can do that. You want to remember that if you take that cap off, that urine's going to come out just like the other way. So you have to tilt it up. Then we remove the cap. Can you remove that? I'm holding my... And then, whoops, we're going to empty the urine out of that. Once it's empty, just tilt it up and we'll replace that green cap and that's all you have to do for that. Your catheter is going to come out in 7 to 10 days after surgery. Come prepared to the appointment, bring your pads and pull-ups. You're going to have urinary leakage. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be worse that first day. It's going to improve every day out. Um, it's going to, your urine leakage is going to be worse when you're standing, coughing, sneezing, anything mm -hmm. that puts pressure down there, even gravity, even standing up. You're going to resume those Kegel exercises um, after surgery, although while the catheter's in place, you want to give your body a rest and not do any of those exercises. After that, you'll meet with the um, urinary therapist and they will rev up those exercises about four weeks. You'll have a second visit with your surgeon in six weeks. Okay, these are some common questions that we are asking class. Can I ask you, Tara? Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I notice there's not much urine in my bag? Uh, you always want to think back to what you've been drinking that day. If you've had plenty of liquids and you're not seeing a lot of urine, you want to check and make sure you don't have any kinks in the tubing. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, increase your intake and just kind of see if the fluid's coming out. Okay. Right. Can I use any kind of binder to include that catheter? No, you do not want to clip anything to this catheter. And the reason for that, this catheter is kind of pliable. Mm -hmm. And if you attach any kind of binder clip, 
pliers, whatever you use, um, it could puncture a hole in it and then it'll leak. So you just want to make sure that what you're doing is just bending it to stop the urine from coming out. Okay. How do I clean the bags or the catheter? You will never need to clean the large bag. Um, it'll be fine. It's only in for seven to 10 days, so you really don't need to clean that. However, if you feel like you need to clean the smaller bag, you can use um, equal parts of vinegar and water and then just swish it around in there, hang it up to dry overnight, and it'll be fine. Can I sleep on my stomach while I have the catheter in? You could sleep on your stomach, however, you might lay on this catheter tubing. Like Ann said, it's kind of, it's a harder, um, so you may not mm -hmm. compress it so that the urine can't come out, but then again, you might. So what you probably would want to do is sleep on your back or your side just for the duration of when the catheter is in. Okay. What if the catheter sticks to the skin around my penis? You can use Vaseline, or if you're not allergic to Neosporin, you can kind of put that around the catheter and it'll lubricate so that it doesn't stick to you. Does the catheter hurt coming out? Generally, no, the catheter does not hurt coming out. Um, it's, you are awake for this one, so you will remember it. Um, however, what does hurt sometimes is when you go to the bathroom the first two or three times afterwards, that urine might kind of feel um, over that irritated skin burns just a little bit. What happens when I call for sneeze after the catheter comes out? You can expect urine leaks. Um, anytime you put abdominal pressure, then it's gonna cause that leakage to get a little bit worse. Um, so that'll gradually get better over the next three to six months and hopefully you won't have any at the end of the six months. How long will I need to wear my pads and pull-ups? Again, that is dependent on each person. So um, you may have to wear it for a few months um, and you gradually may not have to wear a, maybe a thicker pad mm -hmm. or something. Um, but hopefully they can get you to the dry point or nearly dry at the six month mark. And how many should I buy? I would tend to say, you can always go back and get more. Mm -hmm. So just buy maybe a bag or two of those pads. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you can order them from Walmart or from um, Amazon if you just want them delivered straight to your house, so. And if I'm worried about my furniture, what do I use to protect that? You can use, um, there's two things you can use. One is a disposable pad. Um, you can put that on any furniture. Mm -hmm. um, I had a patient actually tell me that you could use like the puppy pads because mm -hmm. they're a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you can also buy the ones that you can throw in the washing machine. So you could probably get those at your medical supply stores. Thank you for joining us today for our video. We hope that you found it very educational.